What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, I'm taking you along for an unedited day out on the water. We're going fishing, got top water, swim baits, underspins, flukes, frogs, all of it. Let's go. So how this video is gonna go, completely unedited. I might have to obviously stop the camera or change batteries, check the mic, uh, not necessarily film when I'm running from spot to spot because it does get kind of windy with this mic up here. If we do get some rain, I'll have to take a little time out and put the mic away and stuff. But uh, for the most part, completely unedited. Uh, you're gonna see the good, the bad, hopefully some fish, some big fish. Uh, but I haven't been here in a little while. Last time I was here, it was, uh, like low 60s cold down in Florida uh, wind rain but I caught them really well really good on uh, a chatterbait so uh, today it's supposed to be mid 80s water temp we're looking at uh, mid 60s so uh, we're coming off of the full moon so full moon in Florida is always kind of a little iffy but uh, we're gonna try and figure them out so got a fluke an underspin a swim bit uh, a swim jig a jackhammer chatterbait, a whopper plopper, a frog, uh, a flip bait. So we're gonna run around and see if we can catch some fish. Again, completely unedited. You guys will get to see everything, the good, the bad, all of it. Uh, backlashes if there are any. But uh, let's go run to our first spot and we'll get this video going. All right, guys, so uh, how it's gonna work, um, just gonna run straight through. I'll have to change batteries, like I said, for, or uh, stop the camera to change the batteries, check the mic, that sort of stuff, but uh, gonna leave it completely raw and unedited. Like I said, you get all of it. Uh, first stop, just out here on a big flat. You know, Florida, the fish can be temperamental. Last time I was here, like I said, it was um, a lot colder and windy and raining and I caught them really well on the chatterbait. Today we got kind of intermittent clouds. Water temp is in the mid 70s so it's come up about 10 degrees. Um, we're gonna start out here on this grass flat. You know Florida's all about grass. If you can find um, shell beds and hard bottom you can find fish there too but uh, today we're gonna be fishing this little, these little grass patches, hydrilla, uh, if you can find some little deeper deeper areas, that's when we'll throw um, a little bit heavier chatterbait, that sort of stuff. But uh, enough talking, let's go. You go with the go with the chatterbait first. Starting off with a 3 8 ounce chatterbait. Water depth's only like three foot, so I, I just want to be able to tick the tops of the grass.
So down below in the video description, uh, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna run all the way through, but we'll leave little timestamps where you can uh, cut to fish catches, uh, talking, teaching, that sort of stuff. But to those of you guys that just want it, a lot of guys just like to hit hit play and just let it go through. Maybe you're at work or at home, whatever. But um, down below, we'll leave those little timestamps so you can jump between if you want to. So again, we're fishing these little sparse grass patches. Start here, and we'll work our way across this flat, and fishing different things. Got the jackhammer, swim jig, underspin, uh, top water, fluke. We get into some slick, calm water, uh, clearer water. We'll, uh, we'll throw the fluke. A fish caught it. All right, that didn't take long. <laughs> Not much to write home about, but it's a bass. These fish like to hang around these little grass patches. Florida has about 187 different types of grass, so I'm not gonna even pretend to know what they are. But uh, no, in all seri seriousness, there's a tons of different tons of different types of grass, and you gotta pay attention to where you're catching them in because that's where it's the hook. Because you can find that pattern, you find that same type of grass around where you're where you were catching them. If you find the same somewhere else, you can a lot of times duplicate um, that pattern. Obviously the key is hydrilla. If you can find deeper hydrilla, that's good. But today we're gonna to be fishing these visible grass clumps. We're coming off of the full ooh, there was one. Coming off of the full moon. Full moon always makes these fish different. Florida full moons are always just different. So I'll figure out how and where these fish are coming and going. Oh, it just got cracked. I think we started on the right spot. I didn't get a hook in that fish, but hopefully I'll come back. Just throwing that 3 8 ounce jackhammer with that uh, Zayco on there. important to make sure you change your angles of casting. 
on these grass patches because these fish get down into those patches and you can think that you've made enough casts on a spot and really they just want it at a different angle. Chalk this spot up in the wind. First stop. One bass. Another bite. There's a gator out here. You get hung from the grass, you can pop your rod like that and rip that grass free. Rip the bait free out of the grass. Wind starting to blow. That'll help this bite. Look at this grass that we're fishing. And there's hydrilla down below. You know, when you're fishing in Florida, a lot of these times, a lot of times these grass flats can get overwhelming. So it's nice to have a visible target to cast to, kind of keep your bearing with everything that's going on. I'm gonna move kind of. I'm gonna move kind of quickly through this stuff, but obviously you could. Uh, if you're not a reaction fisherman, reaction bait fisherman, you can pick this stuff apart with like a, a Texas rig or a shaky head. A little flip bait would work really well too. Senko, that sort of stuff. But I'm gonna pick these patches apart and then we'll go run to the next spot. But um, the other thing you want to pay attention to is your depth. This particular lake is not mapped, so I'm paying real close attention to my. 2D sonar up front to see when there's uh, little ditches or, or uh, low spots, depressions. So uh, a lot of times a fish will sit, even if it's six inches deeper, they'll sit in that little deeper area.
I felt funny. Just different. Not sure how windy it is in the mic, but the wind's picking up, so I apologize for that. Obviously, I can't really take that out. I'll try and lower it, but uh, but yeah, off to a good start. Got three bites now. I'm just gonna fish this way out, and we'll go to the next spot. But um, just covering this grass flat, popping this thing, hopping it, just taking the tops of the grass.
Jackhammer. So again, guys, I'm just throwing this thing right on tops of the grass. You know, if it gets hung up, I'm popping my rod tip, I'm ripping that bait free, and then just getting that, you know, getting that blade going, feeling that vibration. Um, but uh, off to a good start. We'll fish our way out through here, and then, like I said, <laughs> I wanted to go already, but that's uh, that's four bites, two fish. So um, things are going well. Oh, he came off. You guys see that? I literally threw out there and dunk, on the fall. There's a school of fish out there. That was crazy. Caught, caught the chatterbait. Mark this spot. That first grass patch that we started was it's 75 yards right there. Almost went back to back for you guys. on these flats it's really important to kind of slice the pie on your cast. I wanted to talk to you guys for a little bit, but that was two bites on two cats. Oh, three bites. Dang. That one cracked. I don't know what's going on.
So I missed the last two bites. They're absolutely smashing it, but not getting hooked up. That second one, the first one I missed actually caught it. But uh, I'm, I was talking about slicing the pie, your cast. Once I get over here about uh, 11 o'clock, uh, big, big chunk of grass. Couldn't even get the chatterbait through it. Over here, it's kind of sparse grass. Over here, it's a little bit thicker grass. Uh, but it's real important to kind of slice the pie, make sure you fish the whole area, of, you know, efficiently. And then you'll kind of see the pattern of where you can get your bait without getting hung up uh, and present, that, you know, to the fish. But um, that's the craziest thing, man. Like, just rolled up on the spot and there they are chewing. Add a little bit of black sharpie to this blade. It's getting, uh, it's got teeth marks all on it. Just takes a little bit of that flash away. Still has a little bit, but always keep a black sharpie and a red sharpie in your boat. Giant. You guys have wanted to run You guys are getting it. Come on, come on, calm down, calm down. Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, look at the size of that bass. Look at that chatterbait. Whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That is a Florida stud. That thing is massive. Look how these fish are just built. There it is, guys. I'm gonna set her in the live well real quick and we're gonna get a weight on this girl. Oh. Feel that heart pump, man. Raw and uncut, man. You can't fake emotion. Whew. I don't care if I don't catch another fish today, man. That makes the that drive down here, worth it. I just pray that the mic's working in the wind. Either way, you guys will. Oh, shoot. Zeroed out, let's get a scale. Here. Come here. No. Look at 
look at the, look at the mouth on this thing. It's. Ah, here we go. Seven ninety-five. It's bounced, bounced between seven ninety-five and eight fifteen. Big old, big old Florida. All right, girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew. Man, I love bass fishing. And it's great when plans come together. So, I don't care if that fish was six pounds, nine pounds, 12 pounds, big, big bass just excite me. And uh, yeah, so that fish was right, right between eight, 7.95 and 8.15, kind of bouncing around. So we'll call it a 7.95, but uh, those Florida bass are just built so cool. Big old heads, big bellies. Um, let's get to fishing. I might go ahead and take time. One, I'm gonna check camera and battery and mic and then uh, retie. Oh, all right, we're good on audio. Oh, man, big fish excite me. It's the thing about doing these raws too, it's easy to uh, just edit out all the whatever you don't want to edit out, right? But when you're just straight, let's go fishing. No pauses, you know, no, no computer tricks or whatever it may be. And then to stick a giant, it's just, uh, man, that'll get your, that'll get your heart pumping. But uh, always retie. You know, this line's all frayed. Um, you guys saw I had just taken and painted that blade. Um, with that black sharpie but look at the teeth marks on the top of it see that oh pretty cool again you want a little bit of flash you know these things come like this one this one is actually called uh i think it's called green pumpkin shad again i'll link it down below in the video description but when you start catching fish banging in his hard stuff it starts chipping a little bit all you have to do is take that sharpie and uh color it in as much as you want i decided to leave a little bit of silver flash in here you know we got that uh that over overcast getting sunny and then dark and then sunny and then dark so a little bit of flash never hurts on those type of days um obviously that way i think that was the next cast after Look at that knot. Look how pretty that knot is. That is San Diego jam. Now another trick when you're fishing grass, you see this tab, my my excess tab. If I cut this really short, the shorter it is, the more stout, the more rigid that tab is going to be. So it, it hangs up and catches grass a lot more. So when I'm fishing grass, I like to leave it actually longer. That gives, try and hold this for you. It gives it more play for that thing to fold back and get away from the grass. So hopefully that makes sense. But a little, little grass fishing tip for you. Ooh, let's go catch another one. I'll tell you what. Man, I've caught a lot of big fish, seen a lot of big fish. 
but there is something special about a Florida strain, strain large mouth coming up and opening that mouth. You'd think that fish was 12 to 15 pounds. They got, they're, they're just built different. That head is so much bigger, uh, but uh, you see that thing come out and your eyeballs get about this big and you're like, oh Lord, get in the boat. So those fish are just so awesome. You guys probably can't see this, but I'm actually sitting now in about three feet. I'm sitting in a little depression. That's why I'm spot locked here, but no doubt that, that fish was sitting in that little low spot. Love it. Again, sorry about the wind, guys, but I need it for this bite to uh, really set. That's not good. Really set this bite off. I'm just. You can fish a a bladed jig or a chatterbait, you know, the jackhammer, like you would a lipless two hop in it. It's just a lot harder in this grass not to get buried in, but again, that 3 8 doesn't get, get too deep in it. But a uh, little different presentation they haven't seen just doing that hopping technique. It works really well in the winter time. Um, but it's just a little bit different than that straight retrieve. Another thing I do too is, you know, I never just sit there and reel. I always add like reel twitches. Same thing with a swim jig, the glide bait. Just changes up that cadence of that blade. Gets that skirt pulsating. Adds that secondary action, but. Uh, it's pretty hard to beat a good uh, chatterbait bite.
so in the beginning of this, I told you we're gonna be fishing visual grass. And we are. Uh, there's a little bit of a grass patch up here. Uh, my plan was to fish that taller stuff, and we still will. Got another spot that we'll run to here in a little bit, but um, but once I started drifting off, and I I had I caught that one, and then I got those those other bites, caught that other one just out off the sparse grass, um, just kind of led me to this and that that big old bass, but. Uh, so we'll get to it, but for right now, we're going to let this dry for a little bit, uh, fish up through here, and then uh, we'll run to our, uh, our second spot. Hope you guys are enjoying this. All right. This is that... Uh, that gambler, um, what's this color called? I think it's like Gold Rush. Uh, yeah, Gold Rush. It's that uh, gambler, easy swimmer, and I have that paired up on that owner, flashy swimmer. A little bit of dry braid. This comes through the grass really nicely. Add that little bit extra flash. Over here with the wind blowing this way, it really mucks up the water. You can, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there's maybe, I don't know, 18 inches of visibility. We're only in like three feet of water, so adding that little bit of flash really helps those fish find that bait from a longer way, away, farther distance. When you're fishing this shallow, it's really important, even though I'm trying to yell at you guys, it's really important. <laughs> no, it's really important um, to make long casts. You know, these fish are up here on this shallow flat. You don't want to be banging around, um, jumping around, yelling. Um, you know, I'm having to talk to you and talk over the wind, so I'm talking louder than normal, but um, typically you want to be fairly quiet because these fish, especially if they're coming up to, to get ready for spawn, and they're used to deeper water, they will get really spooky, uh, make them really hard to catch. It's probably dry by now. Let's see.
right up here we got a little patch we like to call them dollar pads they're little pads about that big uh, it's, sometimes they're too thick to throw the chatterbait through and that's where the, um, the swim jig really shines it's just a lot more weedless we can throw it right in the middle of it a lot of times those fish are sitting right down at the base of it so when we get up there we'll throw the swim jig as well You're throwing a bladed jig, in this case a jackhammer, and you feel that did -did 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 and it stops, Thanks, bud. it's go time, set the hook. Like that big one, that she just sucked that thing in. She had it so far down in the roof of her mouth, like almost to her throat in the roof. They just suck this thing in, and that blade, that vibration just disappears. So you've heard it before, but hook sets are free. Uh, when in doubt, set the hook. And slice the pie. That's a it's about 20 yards out off the dollar pad, but I'm gonna work my way around it, and then once I go around it, then I'll work through it with that swim jig. It's a fast fish. Oh, another nice fish. Oh, oh, oh. It's like a four or five pounder. <laughs> it's got to lap it off, right? That fish caught the thing again, the blade bait, the, I can't even talk, caught the jackhammer again. I want you guys to see something here. 
This is the same exact trailer I've thrown every single cast today. Every single fish, still working. I haven't went through more than one trailer bait, trailer uh, on this on this jackhammer. It's the Zeko Yamamoto Zeko, and uh, I'll link the color down below. It's 991, but it's um, it's like a black blue top with a green pumpkin belly, paired up with that green pumpkin shed uh, chatter baits. What was interesting about that fish, not only did it catch it on the initial fall, but I'd already made like four or five casts out there. So it shows you the importance to work your way across and then work your way back across. For some reason, that one just landed in its mouth. That dirty jig swim jig it's got that no jack hook in it move it over here so you can see just a gaff of a hook you're not going to bend that thing out you're going to have that paired up with that gambler uh, water's murky i could probably get away with throwing straight braid but i'm actually throwing 50 pound braid to a 20 pound mono leader um, might get my heart broke especially fishing it right through the thick of this vegetation but we'll start with a leader if uh decide to not to we'll, we'll go straight braid but for right now now I'm gonna work this um, work this dollar pad patch with the swim jig So when you're fishing this thicker vegetation, a lot of times you bring your bait up or through and 
Kind of spit up ice. In there. What I was gonna say is, a lot of time your bait doesn't get through. So once it pops through, let it fall, hit bottom, then then engage your reel, let it let it start swimming. But when you get through that thick vegetation, sometimes it pulls your bait up on top and over, and then let it fall in. And a lot of times you'll get bit on that that second pull. You know, if you're a guy that doesn't like to just cover a lot of water, obviously you could pick this stuff apart with a, a shaky head or a, a Senko. Same stuff that you could use in that other grass, but uh, these have a little bit thicker stems, so it's good to fish it with uh, either Texas rigged or, you know, that hook point buried into the bait so you don't get hung up because they can be fairly strong. But uh, again, there's going to be fish all through there. But I'm wanting to cover water. I don't want to just sit here in one spot and do this video with you guys. So I have three or four other spots I want to run to. Um, got, we got a couple hours, few hours before dark. So already I'm stoked about this video, uh, with that, that, uh, seven pounder, not an eight pounder. 7.95 is not, 7.99 is not an eight pounder. So seven pounder, high seven. Um, you know, got, got that, that heart pumping and then caught some other nice fish. Just lost that one. It was like four to five pounds. Um, but, uh, already stoked about this video, but I want to run around and show you guys some other things, do some other, uh, maybe some other techniques, but man, this chatterbait is still, is working. I want to catch them. I have a whopper plopper up there. It's a little too much ripple on the water right now for that, but maybe we can go find some slick water later, low light. Um, the fluke. And in this situation, uh, I found myself before 
where it's slick calm. You cannot buy a bite on the Chatterbait. You got to go with either a weightless Senko or a Fluke works really well because you can Texas rig it. Use a super line hook so that bait uh, falls a little bit quicker. You can work it more erratically quicker, um, but they eat it because it's that got a dying bait fish movement. So I got a Fluke. Um, I have that Mega Bass swim jig on there tied on because it's got a little flash to it. It actually has, I'll show it to you guys. It's got a little underspin on it, so if I wanted to add a little bit of, little bit of flash, uh, that's the Oze Swimmer, I think is how you pronounce it. It's U O Z E, um, and then what else? Oh, I got that that uh, underspin and the other swim jig. But uh, I'm gonna kind of pick up the pace a little bit. You know, eventually we'll come back and hit that spot where those those three or four bites were. But pick up the pace, fish our way out, go to the next spot and uh, hopefully catch some more big ones.
another little uh, dollar pad patch over here. So we'll pick that apart quickly and then we'll get moving.
All right, guys. I think it's finally time for a replacement trailer. <laughs> Thanks, bud. That lasted all those casts, all those fish. It's still fishable. It's just sliding down after every two or three casts. But um, we're going to go ahead and run to the next spot. Got a couple boats up here. Um, looks like they're live bait fishing, but I want to give them their space. I assume they're live bait. I see the bobbers. I doubt they're throwing a float and fly here. But a lot of guys will use shiners and stuff for live bait. So I'll give them their space. We'll turn around. We'll run uh, to the next spot and uh, hopefully pick up where we left off. Yeah, we're live. All right, spot number two. Gonna be doing the same thing, fishing the grass edges. Um, we'll work our way up and then we'll flip around and we'll go fish through some I call them reeds or bulrushes. I'm sure there's a, a proper name for them here in Florida, but uh, we'll go fish that stuff. And then maybe if there's time, depending on how well we're catching them over here, we'll go back to that spot where we caught those other fish and wrap it up there. But um, let's get at it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to turn on that Mega Live, the forward-facing sonar. Uh, this lake's not mapped. Um, there's some old low spots and ditches and that sort of thing. So I'm going to use that forward-facing sonar to look ahead 30 or 40 feet uh, and show me where that old ditch runs, where where the where that depth contour change is. It's really easy when you can look at that and see, oh, there it just drops to four foot and make that cast because those fish are gonna sit in that, in that ditch, in that low spot.
just marking the low spots. That way I can come back through, I can follow my trail, my waypoints. Of, oh! They're here. I wasn't even swimming that thing, it was a jig bite. Uh, that way I can follow my trail and my waypoints and fish that that right lineup. Cracked it. Well, this trailer didn't last as long as the first. Man, that first one ate it on the bottom. That one absolutely hammered it. easy way to line up your trailers if you're throwing a Kitek or some kind of swim bait on your on your swim bait head or your trailer go ahead and put that bait up against where it needs to be and then mark on the top of the bait where that hook needs to come out that way you're perfect every time when you slide it up on to the deal onto the keeper boom Perfect. So if you just like take that hook point and mark the top where that hook point needs to come through the bait, you'll have a perfect lined up bait every time.
Now I like fishing into the wind. It's easier to uh, control the boat. If you didn't have, if you didn't have spot lock, uh, another thing you could do is either stay on the trolling motor in the wind, or just slowly drift. You know, t uh, drop your your motor all the way down, trim it all the way down, causes more drag, and then you could slowly drift with the wind and fish these flats. But I'm just looking again. I'm looking for that that little break. And I'm fishing the grass lines with this uh, chatterbait. want to be around the grass. If you're not around the grass, you're not around the bass. You got to be right on those edges. And over there, I was having to hop this bait a lot more to get it through the grass. Here, I haven't really found it well yet.
going through a little bit of a dry spell here. Got those first two bites back there. winds laid down not blowing nearly as hard as it was Another good one. Look at the size of this one. Oh yeah, look at that thing, gone. The size of these mouths, choked. Whew. That one's, mm, high five, low six. <laughs> Just built. Thanks bud. We are recording, right? Yeah. I'm 
good actually. No, gotta retie. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this, cause I am. I mean, it's starting to, the wind is really starting to lay down. Make sure the mic's working. It's really starting to lay down. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, I'll, I'll uh, show you guys here in a second how clear this water is getting. Uh, really wish I would have got that other that other one was like four to five pounds man we'd be on our way to a really good bag either way it's been a great day already the trick with this knot is not to cinch it you slide it down to where it connects to the bait and then cinch Again, leave that little tag a little bit longer in the grass and it will fold over and not hook up as much. But uh, there's some wind. Let's keep going. Tilapia beds out here. Never really done well around those.
like a bass over there. He's running from me, or that's his little start of his bed over there. I don't know if I have anything to, he's running around all over the place like a crazy man. I'm not going to spend much time on this. Looks like it's a, I don't know, three and a half, four pounder. Think that? He's chasing like bluegill a lot. I'm gonna leave him alone. That tells you that there's some spawners. Female I caught earlier, she was still, she didn't look post spawn, she was still pre spawn.
you'll see I'm just I'm always looking you know, I'm wearing polarized sunglasses so I can, I'm always looking for the grass I'm looking for flashes looking for bait fish uh, just always scanning the water you know looking for little stick ups little grass clumps got one back here you know all that stuff comes into play you know if I was to get bit right now I would know obviously say I was out in the middle of nowhere but I there was a grass patch that was there um, I could keep my boat location where I was and make that same cast here it's easier because you got some trees and stuff but but to always be scanning the water a lot of times fish will, or bait fish will show themselves to you in this case I'm looking for the grass line right here right there All right, guys, that's stop number two. That one was interesting with the uh, right when we got in there, had that one. Let me play it back. Had one eat it on the bottom as I was talking to you guys. Had another one just absolutely freight train it and miss it. I think I had a third bite and miss. Yeah, cracked it and then caught that, that really nice one. So um, stop number two paid off. So now we're gonna run to stop number three. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this raw, unedited video. Let's go catch some more. Well, I guess I lost my hat on that last run. Um, didn't even go that far, but I'm gonna go with the old sun hat. But uh, gonna continue this pattern, fish these. Now we're gonna be fishing some more uh, visible grass patches, kind of like what we started on. Then we'll come over here to these reeds throw the swim jig, the chatterbait, that sort of stuff. And uh, just trying to mix it up for you guys. I don't want to keep doing the same thing, but if, if this doesn't pan out, then we'll go back to the first spot, uh, try and catch them there, and then maybe end on some top water or something like that. But uh, just want to give you guys a little bit different than just the, just the chatterbait and swim jig game, but uh, it's working, so might have to stick with it. Thank you. 
Okay, I got a switch going out, guys. This trim button up here. Just wanted to trim my motor down. All right, let's break out the top water and see if we can make it happen.
Get some work, little buddy. So I told you guys before that I typically like to um, get this thing straight. You can't even tell if it's on straight or not. Um, fish upwind. This flat over here is a little bit shallower, so with my 360, my Mega Live, um, just kind of gets a lot of grass. But I love having that, those features on the boat, so I didn't want to pull them off the trolling motor for this trip. But uh, so I'm just drifting. I'm not even really touching the trolling motor. I'm just drifting with the wind. When I, uh, you'll see me kind of double tap the floor up there on those little pedals. Those are for the Raptors back there. Those are shallow water anchors, hydraulic, a little different than the Talons. Uh, I love them. They're super strong, very quiet. But uh, so I'll drift down until I get to, to I can't talk until I get within casting distance of one of these visible grass patches, and then I'll pick it apart, uh, kind of like I did right there. Fish the chatterbait in and around it all through there and then ended up going with the top waters to see if I can get a bite, but we got some good patches coming up.
smoked it. <laughs> Another one. Thanks, dude. Got that thing choked too. Jeez. <laughs> Thanks, bud.
All right, guys, the next stop was going to be these little reed islands over here. I don't know if you guys can see them or not anymore. Uh, but there's a couple kayaks on them fishing, and obviously, I can run around and fish a lot more areas. I don't want to go on top of the kayaks because it takes them a little bit more time to get there. So I'll leave that to them. Uh, I'm going to run back down. We'll start on some other offshore grass, some visible grass, and then we'll kind of work our way back into that spot where that, uh, where that seven pounder was.
Oh, I had another one catch it. So the wind's really picked up. Should help this bite. We'll see. We're going back through making that same pass that we did this morning. Not this morning, what? A couple hours ago. But um, hopefully pick off some, some more big ones. I did miss that. Remember that dollar uh, pad patch up there? I missed two or three up there, I believe. So uh, hopefully we'll get those fish to eat again.
really got a backlash to stick. Come on. There it goes. Can't go all day fish without a bad backlash, right? Grab something to clean off the lens for you guys. I was just starting to wonder if that uh, that kind of that afternoon bite was over, but uh, we'll continue this pass up here. Go past this this patch of dollar dollar pads, and then uh, we'll go check out our. I guess our fourth spot, fifth spot, I can't remember. But. I was doing that pumping technique and it just about had the rod ripped out of my hand. It just absolutely destroyed it.
I wish I could describe to you how hard they're hitting this thing. Dude, what is the deal? not the one that was hitting me but it's a bass come here thanks bud they are absolutely cracking this thing and not hooking up i was starting to wonder if it was maybe a big tilapia or something i've caught them before on on underspins and stuff but I have no idea. They those last two, not that one. The last two bites just absolutely wanted to rip the rod out of my hand. I saw that one eat it. It was like a one, one and a half pounder.
I'll show you what these little dollar pads look like. Just small little pads. Pretty sparse. You can fish through them. Fish live all right through here. guys um, we'll go to one more spot I'm not sure where I want to go yet uh, I wanted to fish that area where those kayaks were but again it's windy there I'm sure they're river fishing so we might make a long run maybe to a backwater and try and end it with some top water so fingers crossed if not man it's already been an awesome day Got one super close to eight pounds, one right around six pounds, and then a bunch of other fish. So uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. But uh, we're gonna make, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get out of this wind. We're gonna make a run, long, long run. Hopefully I don't lose this other hat. Otherwise I'll burn my dome. But um, make a long run and swing for the fence. Hopefully get some top water fish, either frog or whopper plopper. If not, we'll wrap it up, kind of talk about some gear, and uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, I'm going to kill it, and we're going to make a long run. Here we go, guys. All right, guys, made a pretty decent, substantial run. Gonna try and fish some top water and uh, hopefully get some top water fish. Otherwise, we'll wrap up the video.
I was hoping it'd be less windy back here and we could throw it throw a frog and stuff, but just a little too much ripple, I think. got here right out here is a hydrilla line of hydrilla so I'm just fishing the edge uh, it runs almost the middle of the channel right here so I'm just fishing the, the inner edge to the channel
All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, should be, I don't know, three or four hours or so. Kind of lost track of time. Yeah, probably something like that. Like, uh, yeah, three hours, three, four hours, something like that. But, but uh, great day. You know, I wanted to run a few different things. Boats in the way, or not in the way, but boats were on spots, kayaks were on spots. But uh, either way, man, a successful day. Anytime you can catch a fish, uh, I'm going to say over five pounds, but, uh, you know, three and a half, wherever you are, um, you know, if you can catch a seven pounder, that's a trip well worth it. So, um, and then having that other fish, I lost that one other good one. Like I said, it was like between four and five, just came off right here at the boat. Um, but then that other good one just choked that, that jackhammer. So let's talk about the all-star of the day. It's this guy right here. That is the three eighths ounce Z-Man jackhammer in green pumpkin shad. And that is that Yamamoto Zeiko trailer. That is only the second trailer that I went through all day. How cool is that? Uh, and this is the 880, 883 uh, BJR, bladed jig rod. It's a 7 foot 4. Um, it's an IMX Pro. It's their new bladed jig rod. I really like it. I used to throw an X-Pride. I you know I throw glass sometimes. But this has a real, real moderate tip on it. And you get to the backbone fairly quickly. Um... So you can really hammer it home. And then anytime I'm fishing, fishing grass, and you guys saw how I was fishing today, I'm always throwing braid to leader. That is actually 50, 50 pound braid. Um, and that is 16 pound sunline sniper fluorocarbon. So I'm running braid to fluorocarbon leader. Uh, you can go braid to mono if you want. Um, and then this reel is sweet. That's that new, this is the new Bantam. That thing is buttery smooth. Um, really, really impressed with that reel. It's got that infinity drive. But that was, man, that was, I wanted to catch them on a few different ways, a few different techniques to show you. But, um, man, they were just eating that, that, jack, that jackhammer so well. Um, but if it was slick calm, I'd be throwing the fluke, the underspin. If it got real warm, I'd throw the frog. But guys, all in all, a great day. Like I said, down below in the video description, I'll link all, all, the, all the stuff I had out here. But I'll also put all the timestamps in. So I got to go through and watch all this day again and uh, label the fish catches and when I'm talking, teaching, that sort of stuff. But uh, you guys asked for this, the, uh, the unedited, the long, the long version video. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes it's a stressor to do it because it takes a lot can't just do like a half day or so you got to put your time in and and build a pattern and and uh, today it worked out i mean having that giant eat uh man those florida fish when those heads come out of the water man i thought that fish was between nine and ten pounds um and uh they're just built different here in florida but uh almost an eight pounder 7.95 bounce between 7.95 and 8.15 so we'll call it the lesser um, but all in all, a great day. If you guys like this video, give us a thumbs up, man. We're all about teaching, all about having fun and showing you guys what we're doing. So uh, give us a thumb, thumbs up. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click that bell, turn on notifications. We do teaching and fishing videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we have other videos, uh, you know, shorts and, and stuff on Facebook and Instagram. So make sure you guys follow us on other um, our other platforms as well. But guys, I can't stress it enough. Can't say it enough. We appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. We'll see you on the next video.